I'm doing this video real quick just to kind of talk to you guys about something I talked about in the past. I had a viewer uh, ask me about this, and well, I've had a lot of questions. I love the comments, and I love the questions. Uh, I just want to help people out, so uh, making these videos, if they're helping, then I'm, I really am glad. That's, that's why I'm here in the first place. Uh, uh, like I said before, I am SOS <laughs> and Staff Sergeant Badass. Okay. Uh, what you see here is uh, you have different styles of containers. Okay. Now we use a lot of containers in everyday life, right? Uh, you got anything from uh, frequently used uh, juice containers on the end. Those are just for like juice. That's like apple juice. Uh, these are commonly used. You got some for water. You got some for milk. So sometimes you can see these in many different, like these are here, um, and these are the recently found. I've I've been getting these uh, milk jugs here um, from. Uh, I don't. It's it's. I don't know what company is making these. I didn't like how they poured it first, but I, they've kind of grown on me. They're thick walled and and they're solid color and light doesn't really get in them. Now light can get in these over here. Now these are the ones you want to keep in a dark place. These really wouldn't matter much because they're you know they're not really light. Um, but it, honestly, people, it doesn't matter as long as you're not keeping these stored. Um, now how water works, water storage works. Okay. I've had a lot of uh, people say strange stuff to me about what works with water. Now, I will tell you what works for me because I've tested it and it works. So um, that's what's always good is having knowledge that I can share that I know is true. Um, now, I'm not going to go shout it to the rooftops or anything, but this is my rooftop I'm shouting off of. So what works for me is I, um, I keep all sorts of water stored all over the place. See, I've got... That's, I think, about 50 gallons over there. Uh, well, you can count these and figure out how many gallons this is. Um, now, uh, in my uh, shed area, I have a section that's water storage. I have another water storage. Uh, now, okay, so in a, in a situation where you say have to bug out, or you're bugging in. Okay, now if you're bugging in, you can keep a 55-gallon uh, drum, right? So... Keeping a 55 gallon drum and catching some water and blah blah blah. Sure, okay. Are you gonna put a 55 gallon drum in the back of your pickup when it's time to go? No, nope, probably ain't gonna have room there, or you're not gonna be able to have time to pick it up and put it in the back of your vehicle. So, what do I recommend? Uh, the containers you see over there, they're five gallon, um, they're five gallon each. Uh, these that wouldn't be hard to carry to your car, okay. Uh, now these, obviously they're a gallon each and then you got your half gallons. So, uh, these would probably be way more practical for you to store and then also carry to your vehicle. Now let's get into water storage. Now, water will only become, uh, uh heavily with, heavy with bacteria and stuff, um, uh, you know, pollutants and things if you leave it outside and it's open container. Uh, as long as it is sealed, then it will be okay. Uh, that's if it's, you know, fresh water. Now, let's say you get your water from a tap, okay? So, I use a filter. I have a filter that I filter my water through that I get from the city. So, I use city water, obviously. Duh. Okay. So, but I filter that water through and uh, that water uh, gets added to these containers. But now... How was well, like, well, uh, Mr. Badass? How do you, uh, how do you uh, uh, clean these containers? You know, you had milk in them, right? Yes. Okay. So how do I clean my containers? That's a good question. Okay. So now I don't empty one of these that often, but when it happens, then I leave it on the counter. Then I take me a pot of water and then I put it on my burner and I get it to the point of. It's not super hot that it's going to melt the container, but it works. Uh, I add that. I add uh, one cap of bleach, and then uh, I let the container set, and then I dump the container out, um, and it's done killed everything. It's killed all the bacteria that would have been there, and then some. 
So basically you have a sterilized jug. So you take the jug and then you fill it up. You make sure you just double rinse it a couple of times. Just give it a little rinse over. And then uh, fill her up with some fresh filtered water. Uh, whatever container you choose, uh, fill it up with some fresh water. And then uh, uh, if you want to purify water, this is another another subject. But you don't really have to at this point after I've done all that to the container. Um, I fill it up with some fresh clean water that's been filtered. Then I take my, uh, I use plumber's tape. A lot of people don't know what plumber's tape is, so I better explain. What's this plain? I've got some in here. The junk drawer. Ted needs it for president. All right, so once again, I'm going to represent some Harbor Freight. They don't sponsor me. But this is it. Let's see if I can. Plumber's tape. There you go. Get a little look see. That's what it looks like. It's not sticky. It's just a Teflon. Okay. It's like Teflon tape. Uh, it's made of uh, Teflon. And for scientific nerds out there, that's polytetrafluoroethylene. Yeah, I'm not that smart, but I know some things. Um, polytetrafluoroethylene. That's uh, uh, Teflon. Okay. So what you do is you take off your cap. Get your cap out of here. Take the Teflon tape, your plumber's tape, and gently apply it to get it started. Then kind of hold one side and then let her tighten up a little bit. Then after you kind of get it connected and it's touching, go around it a couple of times. Okay. Then once you're done with that, put this away. Just cut it with some shears because it's going to be pretty hard to break. Cut it with some shears, then uh, reapply your cap. And you'll see it's a firm, tight cap now once you do that. This works on these, these, and these. I do it to all of them. Just gives it an extra seal so I don't have to worry about... Um, because I'll get into that in a minute with the pollutants in air. Okay. All right. So uh, I electrical tape the cap. Just a, another thing I just do just because I do it. I do it. You can do it with something else. It don't matter. Uh, you can use damn medical tape if you want. I don't care. Uh, but that's just something I do just to say I did my job and I know it's been checked by me. So that's just what I do. Now let's talk about pollutants and air. All right. So when you store your water, don't store it by beside something with a lot of odors. Just like if I took this gallon container here, I put it in a basket full of onions. Do you think in a week it's still going to taste like just fresh water? No, it's not. Even though it has a cap on it, I've sealed it and everything. The science and weirdness that goes behind this stuff is that this will this will taste like onions. I don't know how to explain that to you. It's science and it just happens. Now, the other thing I can tell you, the reason why I'm using these is because they're disposable. I can throw them away or I can reuse them. Did you know also another another good fun fact for you? something that I know, uh, materials inside plastic will start to uh, gradually do its little process. It kind of, it's, it's scent. It starts to leave slowly. It's really hard to explain how it kind of breaks down. Plastic will break down, but it breaks down not that much. That it's going to be like, oh my God, plastic breaks down. What are you telling me, Mr. Badass? You're freaking me out. Don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. But the thing is, every now and then, you might you might open one of these and kind of taste a plasticky taste. That doesn't mean nothing. It's just the scent that it takes on. If I leave this in a room with uh, uh, where someone, uh, like, I don't know, an outhouse and people poop a lot, it's probably going to taste like poop. <laughs> I don't know what that tastes like, but that's probably what it would taste like. Uh, I hope this uh, helps you out. I just want to give you some... Uh, just some facts on storing water on the cheap and you you guys are poor and you can't afford nothing I am I'm a poor man I live on poor folk street and if you live on poor folk street like uh, like the badass family you want to find ways of saving money and doing it sterile and this is another reason why I was telling you to keep bleach okay keep I've got uh, I went and grabbed another gallon of bleach and there's a reason why I'm grabbing bleach uh, I keep extra soap, I keep extra hand, not hand sanitizer, but uh, I keep uh, hand soap, I keep extra items of this stuff, I keep it stored, and 
I don't talk about that a lot, but it's something that you all should do because bleach works for so many different things. You can use it to purify your water. You can use it to clean up blood. You can use it to clean up messes, poop, funky bacteria. People get sick. You clean stuff. Take out stains and whatnot, dude. You can use it for all sorts of stuff. It is a magical, magical thing how many uses bleach has. So it's just something that I just wanted to share with you guys that, that you can do. Uh, to It's just one way of... If that's bleach is for purifying water. If it's already purified water, then don't purify it. Um, if it comes out of your faucet and you can't run it through, I'll get in this real quick. I won't leave you hanging. Uh, if you can't run it through a filter, okay, you're gonna get water from the city. Anybody, there, anybody out there ever drank out of a water hose before? I have my hands up. Okay, so I I've drank out of a water hose before. We were all kids once, right? Um, but how many parents today are like, oh my God, Billy, you know, don't drink out of that water hose. Uh, <laughs> parents freak out over it now, don't they? It's weird how we are with our first kid, though. All right, so, but just so you know, um, it's one drop of, chlor of, of bleach. Hang on. Okay, sorry about that, my youngest is attacking so she has to come and get involved in what i'm doing she's she's the future uh ba prepper yeah so she's moving my jokes all right okay so how many drops of bleach per what all right so each liter of uh, water you want to add one drop okay each one of these if you look up a gallon a lot of people are like well how many how many are in a you know, it'll say on here, on your, it'll say one gallon, and then you got 378. So, is that 78? Yeah, 378. 3.78. So, that's, well, I mean, that's, what, four almost? So, you would add, you would add, like, three drops and maybe a little mini drop. You know what I mean? Just a little pinch. Uh, if it tastes kind of Clorox, uh, chlor chlorine -y, uh, bleachy or whatever, don't worry about it. It's just ninja. You are gonna you're gonna bust it. You're gonna bust your face. All right. So if it tastes kind of kind of bleachy, you'll be okay. You'll live. Now for these, like if you want to do smaller ones, say you got a bunch of these laying around, you just take a look at it, right? You just take and see this and this one's uh, this one's let it get unblurry. I hate it when it does that. Why are you so blurry? There it is. 1.89. So, you would add a couple of drops to this just to be on the safe side. Uh, and you, you get the point. But for each, uh, each liter, you're going to add one drop of uh, bleach. Okay? That's for purification. That's for if you get your water from the city and you don't have a filtering system. I have a filtering system, so I don't have to do it. And then, like I said, for uh, sterilizing, uh, I uh, I just get a, a small pan of water onto the stove. It doesn't have to be massive. Maybe about um, a couple of liters, and then uh, I sterilize my container. Um, you can use the big pots of water if you want, but just make sure it's hot, and then uh, add one cap of bleach, okay? Add one cap of bleach before you pour the water in, and you can sterilize your container. Then dump that out, and then add your uh, uh, your filtered water or your water and uh, bleach mix. Like you would add, like I said, it's one one drop per liter, and a gallon a gallon would be almost four drops. Okay. See, so, you, know, you can get drop charts online, and you can look that up. But there you go. That is an awesome, awesome prep for you. And that's some good information for you. And I really, really hope that helps. All right. So real quick before I leave, uh, your election chaos is tomorrow. Uh, if you're planning to vote, I've already said how I feel about that. Make sure you got a plan. Uh, do your thing and get home. Get where you need to go. Get to safety and get out of the streets. Uh the aftermath of whoever is elected or whatever. If you're worried about it like me, I do. I worry about stuff like that. But I don't worry. I just stay prepared. Uh, pack heat if you can. Me, uh, I pack heat. That's what I do. I always pack heat. 
uh, people around here call me two guns and they care they call me two guns for a reason but a little bit of preparedness advice always carry slugs and uh, I don't know what kind of op you want to call this triple op this is triple op and triple op I always bring the slugs all right a little Texas defender for you uh, people love that gun I I, I don't know why everybody just loves that gun so much, but it's just one of my favorites. But anyways, if you can carry, carry. If you can't, then, uh, then well, I guess you won't. Stay safe out there, all right? This is uh, Staff Sergeant Badass, and uh, this is SOS. And uh, I hope you learned something today. Thanks for tuning in. Like and subscribe.